Hi there, and welcome to my advanced guide for Stellaris 3.0. In this series, I'm going to be doing a Let's Play, but with a bit of a difference. I'm going to be narrating my gameplay, talking about why I've done things, what I'm going to do, and why I should do things. From it, you can draw your own conclusions, and you can decide which pieces of information are great tips, and which pieces won't help your gameplay. Now, I'm not going to be playing with a very specialized civilization. In fact, I've designed a civilization which should have the minimal impact on my actual gameplay. So I've gone with some very generic traits, civics, and ethics. I'll show them now. If you want to pause it, you can have a look. In addition to that, I've chosen a very generic origin. And you'll also see now the settings that I've chosen for this playthrough. In this video, I concern myself mainly with the initial choices and decisions you have to make with your civilization. You can check out the full list of topics in the description. Let's dive in. So, here we are. The Othethi Interplanetary Assembly is our civilization. And let's dive into the game. Let's start with the things that jump out at us. Technology. So we have our research, physics, society, and engineering research to deal with. Starting with the physics research, we've got a few choices available to us at the moment. I'm going to recommend going with the increase to uh, physics research output here. Though having said that, the global energy management technology, which allows us to build the energy grid building, is now a really good building. It's a really good technology and a good building. However, it does cost quite a lot. 3,000, which for us would be around 10 years. So, so we're not going to take that. And on top of that, the fusion reactor, which would give us better engines on our ships, we really don't need that at this stage. And probably for quite a while, actually. So at the moment, we're going to go with the plus 20% to physics research. Now in society research, we've got some interesting choices. I would normally go for this one if I were to see it, the plus 20%. But we've also had genome mapping come up. Now, this gives us a bonus to pop growth speed. And... Pop growth is one of the most important modifiers in the game. The faster you can grow pops, the more pops you'll have, and the more economic output you will have from your empire, making it bigger, better, and stronger. On uh, the other hand, we've also got the plus two unity, planetary unification. That's also an important technology, which will allow us to go down the path. Here it's the administrative path, which means we'll be able to build better planetary capitals, and unlock better technologies around that area. So that's also a good technology. But but we're going to go with the genome mapping here. And then finally in engineering, we are we're going to go with a plus 20% to research for the same reason as physics. Better armor, we don't need that immediately. Increased hull points is nice, but quite a bit too expensive. So we're going to go with a plus 20% research. Now, if I'd seen any technologies down the robotic path at this point as well, I would have taken those. But I don't, so I'm going to go with this plus 20%. The way that exploration works has changed quite dramatically at the start of the game. Now, your shipyards, uh, or your starting starbase here, provides some sensor range for you, which means that the adjacent planets to your home system, you'll be able to see what they are, the, the, the planets in adjacent systems. So for instance, I am a savannah world species. I can see there is a savannah world planet here. So the first thing I'm going to do is send my science ship immediately over there to survey that planet. The reason I want to do that is I want to survey that system. I want to get a colony ship down on that planet as soon as possible. And the first step to doing that is surveying. On top of that, I'm also going to send out my constructor there just to speed up this process. Now, there are some other things I need to do at the start of the game before we get going. I'm also going to go into my policies and have a little look around there. So one of the initial things that is quite important is your unity. So I want to get an increased uh, unity generation. And to do that, as a, as a regular species, I'm not a hive mind, I'm not a machine empire, I have trade value. At the moment, I am converting each trade value directly into one energy. There are two other options for my species. I could switch it up and make some consumer goods. Uh, instead of getting one energy, I get half an energy and a quarter of a consumer good. Or I could do the same thing with Unity. Now, I'm pretty balanced right now on consumer goods. I don't need more of those. So I'm going to go with this marketplace of ideas because I want that extra Unity generation. At the moment, I'm getting 14.75 per month. 
I really would like to increase that. My trade, I'm going to go down by about 10 energy, but I'm going to be converting that 10 energy into five extra unity, which, which is going to be really quite good. That's going to really help me uh, speed down this traditions tree very quickly. We also have our starting world, our capital. Now let's take a look at our capital. Well, are there any things we really need to do here on our capital? And the answer at this point is not really. We don't have the minerals to build new buildings and we don't have the energy yet to clear any of these tile blockers. But there are some things we can do to increase our production. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unemploy some of my bureaucrats. And the reason I'm going to do that, I'm going to unemploy both of them because I at the moment have 30 administrative, uh, 31 uh, empire sprawl, but a cap of 50 due to my jobs. Well, I don't need all that 50. And these bureaucrats use two consumer goods each. So I'm going to unemploy both of those and they'll go from costing me 2.5 consumer goods to month, per month down to 0.5. Yes, they're going to drop my happiness slightly, but I have on my species rights, if I go to that quickly, we'll see that I've got decent conditions enabled. So when my pops are unemployed, they do have reduced happiness, but not by a massive amount. It's not like they're on basic subsistence where it would be a real issue if I were unemployed. The next thing I'm going to do before unpausing is I'm going to unemploy my enforcer and I'm going to fire my governor. And then I'm just going to quickly unpause just for two days. Okay, and now we've got a little bit of crime. That's probably a bad thing, I would think. But luckily, we can negotiate a deal with the criminals on our planet. And what that will do, it'll increase our stability by 10%. There we are. Now we're up to 73% stability, but we've got quite a lot of crime. Well, we should really do something about that crime. Let's, let's employ a governor and let's put an enforcer in. And let's just unpause again for a moment. Oh, look. We fixed our crime problem. And what was the secret ingredient, everybody? The secret ingredient is crime. And so what's that done? It's increased our stability by 10. Now, every point of stability you go up by gives you an extra 0.6% increased resource output. In addition to that, you get an extra 0.6% trade value. And it also increases your immigration pull. At the moment, we don't care about the immigration. That's fine. And there's a few more things we need to do before we really get going in the game. So I'm going to go to my ship designer here and I'm going to untick auto generate designs. Now, if you are starting in a particularly competitive game, even then I would say that this is, this is almost completely necessary. I'm going to clear the design and do one more thing and that's remove the hyperdrive. So now I've got ships with no weapons, no defenses and no hyperdrive. But these ships only cost 45 to build. If I if I just go off the design again, so we go from 100 down to 45. So I'll save that design. And now I could upgrade. I use that term loving here. We're going to upgrade our ships to that new and improved design. And it's going to give us 145 alloys. So I'll do that upgrade. I'll unpause it just for a moment. And they've been upgraded. And now we have 245 alloys well that's fantastic that's a lot of alloys and you might be asking what are we going to do with these alloys well what we're going to do is trade them on the internal market some would say i could say black market take your pick we're going to sell 50 alloys to get some more energy we're also going to add a monthly trade to sell almost all of our food we don't want to sell all of it we don't want to risk going down below 200 food and then, once we've done that, we are going to buy, we're going to buy 50 consumer goods. And then we're going to wait. If you've been enjoying this video and other videos on my channel, please consider subscribing. It will help get my videos out to other players like you. Let's just let the month tick over. Oh, first thing, actually, before that, we, we've had first contact protocols come up. So there are two options here. There's the or two options for us if we had... Um, first contact protocol set to aggressive we could go with the 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 the, the bottom option but but uh i have tended to find that the cautious option tends to be the best um due to the fact you're not going to get uh, negative events as often 
and you can decrease um, other empires' spy network growth on you. And the less information the AI has about you, the less likely they are to attack you, I've found. So I'd recommend Cautious. There are merits to taking the other two as well, but, but I personally recommend Cautious. And there we are, we've gone over the month and we've got, now we've got 130 energy. Well, what can we spend it on? Let's buy another 50 consumer goods. So now we have, we're in the second month of the game and what could we do with, we've got, we've got 200 food, 200 consumer goods and 200 hours. Well, I'm going to buy a colony ship. So that's going to be finished in 12 months time. I'm going to finish that at 22.01 and uh, February. Hopefully by that point my science ship will have completely surveyed this system. My construction ship will have begun building and hopefully finished my star base there. Meaning that I'm going to be getting a colony down there in the f in 2201, you know, 18 months into the game. In this game it's massively important to have your colonies built, the first two initial colonies, if you're having two habitable worlds, which you probably will, to get those down as soon as possible because the sooner they're down, the sooner they will finish. And as soon, the sooner they finish, the more pop growth you'll have. And the more pop growth you'll have, the more pops you'll have. And the more pops you'll have, the more economy you have. And in this game, you just want more. More, more, more. And let's put the speed up to fast there and we'll just flow through the game now. So the next thing I'm really going to be doing is I'm going to wait to build up enough energy credits and enough minerals to start making some decisions on my home world with regards to buildings, districts, and tile blockers. I'm not going to buy minerals with energy because that'll end up costing me overall more. I just want them to naturally grow to a point where I have enough. Uh, but I'm also quickly, I'm going to remove this monthly trade because I want to be at at least 10 food per month so I can get back up to a second colony ship. Because somewhere around here, I don't know exactly where, but somewhere there's going to be another planet just like this one. And this is a reasonable planet, starting carrying capacity 52. It does have five tile, uh, four tile blockers blocking five districts in total, but it's but it's a pretty good planet. I've got a, a reasonable number of energy districts and there's loads of food districts, but, but that's not really so important to me. The mining districts is what I'm looking at, really. So I now have enough minerals to build pretty much anything I want on my capital in terms of buildings and in terms of districts. I can build anything except a city district. But what do I want to build? So my planetary capacity is 64. Now that's that's pretty reasonable. That's giving me at the moment additional pop growth. I'm getting plus 2.53 per month, which is, that's pretty good. I can't really complain about that, but it could be higher. Now, the way I'm going to increase my pop growth, because at the moment you can see I'm getting regular base growth of three plus this 2.53, which is logistic pop growth. And that's based on, uh, that's based on the number of pops I have, which at the moment is 28, and the carrying capacity, which is 64. Now, I've actually done another video about uh, where the specific Goldilocks zone is on, on this carrying capacity and population. I'll link that down below in the description if you want to watch it. Uh, but, but, but in essence, you want to get your capacity as high as possible. Above around 80, and, and you'll be really quite comfortable. At 82, we can have... 25 pops and be at max pop growth. So I want to increase that planetary capacity. Now, if I build any of these districts other than the city district, they each only have two additional housing. Whereas my empty districts each provide four carrying capacity. So if I build uh, one of those new districts and thus remove one of my tile blockers, the net change to my planet capacity would be minus two. In addition to that, while I'm waiting for the district to build, I'll actually go down by four planetary capacity, which isn't so great. I don't want to build any of these districts on my capital. No resource districts, not at the moment. Because if I reduce my planetary capacity, I'll be reducing my pop growth. I don't want to reduce my pop growth. So what are the options available to me? How do I employ these people at the moment who are doing clerk jobs, rubbish, how do I give them a new purpose in life? Well. I'm going to be building buildings. So the initial buildings I could choose between that are really useful. I've got a big list of buildings here, as you can see. There's the research labs. Now that's going to give me two researcher jobs and some extra science. Extra science is really good. That'll give me an extra 30 science. That's fantastic. Otherwise, which other buildings are useful? Well, 
looking through this list here, the Stronghold, I don't need Soldiers. The Resource Silo, never ever build it. If you build this, I don't know what you've done wrong, but just don't, okay? Just don't build it. Um, precinct Houses, if your crime has gone through the roof, if you're next to uh, a Megacorp, the Crime Megacorp, then, then yes, that would be useful. Luxury Resonance. Well, this is actually quite a good building now. It's going to increase both your amenities and your housing, and housing will increase your planetary capacity. So if I had to build this, I'd go up to 67 planetary capacity and 13 amenities. I don't need that right now, and it's 400 minerals. Uh, I want to spend that on something which would be much more beneficial to my empire immediately. So, so I'm not going to do that yet, but it's, it's definitely a good building now. On top of that, we've got Hollow Theatre. Well, that's my preferred building for amenity production because you both produce amenities and unity and you get a bucket load of amenities, plus 20. That's going to balance your amenities out for a big, wide gap of population. Commercial zones, well, in this version of the game now, I would actually recommend not building commercial zones. Never. There's, there's really no need to build them. Because of the auto-pop resettling, you shouldn't be at a point where you have unemployed pops that can't migrate to another world that has available jobs for them. So if you're building commercial zones, you're employing them in clerk jobs, we now have less pops in 3.0. And that means that each pop has to be more valuable to us. It has to do more. And, and because of that, lots of the resource-producing jobs, so your miners, your, your farmers, your technicians, they've all had buffs to their output. Clerks haven't had buffs. They're still plus two clerk, uh, no, plus two amenities and plus two trade value. And there are no technologies that increase that. There are technologies which increase the output of all of your other jobs, your minor jobs, your food jobs, your, your base worker jobs. There's no technologies that increase your output of here. There are buildings, sure. You can increase your trade value with ethics, buildings, and civics. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm not going to spec into that. I mean, you could specialize completely in that and make a workable empire. But this empire is generic. It doesn't have any bonuses like that. It's not worth it to me. Civilian industries and alloy foundries, they're really good buildings in the early game because they allow you to get artisan jobs or metallurgist jobs. So you're going to produce more consumer goods or alloys without reducing your capacity on your planet. Because if you build an industrial district, you'll be reducing your planet cap by two. And you don't want to do that. You want to keep your planet cap as high as possible. So those two buildings are really good. And the upgraded versions are good too. Uh, there's also the Autocathon Monument. That's a building that does have merit. But at the fact you're only producing eight unity and seven society research for four consumer goods. For only two consumer goods, I could produce five unity. And a bucket ton of amenities. So I would actually recommend going with... Uh, going with the hollow theater over the autocathon and then admin offices you'll be building that to reduce admin uh, administer uh, increase your admin cap reduce the impact of empire sprawl but right now we're not worried about that so i'm going to build the research lab and then i'm waiting to get to 300 and i'll be removing one of these tile blockers to increase my planet cap probably the sprawling slum to generate an additional pop and that's where I'm going to wrap up this episode. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you have any feedback, please leave a comment. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.